Hello and welcome to this free preview lecture series of my on-demand AP Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course. In this lecture, we are going to learn about Law of Probability number 3, which is also sometimes called as Law of Joint Probability. But before we jump into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click on the bell icon if you haven't already done so. Hello and welcome to this lecture on the topic of Laws of Probability Part 3, which is a subsection of Section 2, Probability and Statistics. Law of Probability Number 3, it is also known as Law of Joint Probability. And according to this law, for any two events A and B belonging to a sample space S, the probability that both events occur together is given below. Okay, So probability of A, B is equal to probability of A times probability of B given that A has already occurred. Okay, so this symbol or notation is very important to understand. And this is equal to probability of B times probability of A given that B has already occurred. Okay, so probability of A slash B and probability of B slash A are basically the conditional probabilities. And they will come into play when we discuss Bayes' theorem in the next lecture which again is probably the most uh, confusing component of uh, probability in the context of FE exam. And that is what confuses uh, students mostly, followed by uh, binomial theorem, I, I would say. So it's a uh, law of total prob uh, joint probability is again, pretty simple, straightforward. So you're just multiplying probability of one event times the probability of other event that the first event has already occurred. Okay, and these two equations can be used interchangeably. And they mean basically the same thing, they will result in the same thing. Law of probability number three is best explained by means of an example. So I will jump right into this example. We have a fruit basket which contains three apples. I'll call this as A, four oranges, O, five bananas, B, and five pomegranates, P. What is the probability of sequentially drawing one apple, one orange, one banana, and one apple without replacement? Okay, so by adding this term sequentially, I'm basically forcing you to consider the scenario where you have systematically one by one taken these actions, okay? So once you've drawn one banana, the probability of orange will be dependent upon the fact that one apple has already been removed. And when you go about removing this banana, you have to take into consideration the fact that one apple and one orange has already been removed, right? So now if you think about this, so probability of A given B, B has already happened and now A is happening. Okay, and similarly uh, for the last apple. So we will go through this systematically and we'll calculate each one of them, them and you'll see how law of probability number three will work. So what we are really after is this, probability of removing an apple, then an orange, then a banana, and then an apple. Okay, so this would be probability of A. Okay, in the, in the basket you are basically removing the apple first. Okay, so you're removing the apple first. So that's, uh, that is not dependent on anything else initially, right? But when you remove the orange, you have to take into consideration that the apple has been removed, right? And when you remove the banana, then you basically uh, have to take into consideration the fact that an apple and orange has already been drawn or removed. And when you remove the final apple, this one, then you have to take into consideration that one apple, one orange, and one banana has already been removed. So probability of removing an apple, the first apple is pretty simple. So you have a total of three apples, okay? And your total sample space is three apples, okay? This is three apples, four oranges, so I'll call that A, O, five bananas, and five pomegranates, right? And these three are the three apples. So it's simply three divided by 17. Now probability of an orange given the fact that an apple has been removed is four oranges. So four oranges O divided by, now if you've already removed one apple, how many apples are left? 
okay we don't have three apples we started out with three apples but now we have only two apples and that's where the entire difference is so you have to understand this okay that initially we had three apples but now we only have two apples in terms of number of oranges none of the orange has been removed so this remains same so i'll call this one as a dash and this is o original orange and five bananas and then five pomegranates right so this becomes four by sixteen how about probability of removing a banana given that an apple and orange has been removed, right? So number of bananas remains unchanged, five. And number of apples, you have two because uh, we had already removed one apple over here. Number of oranges, notice that the number of oranges is no longer four because previously we ended up removing an orange, so it is three. And number of bananas is still five. We haven't removed anything yet and pomegranates is still five, okay? You can see that the denominator is changing continuously, right? It is very important because that is how uh, con um, these joint probabilities will work. And now the probability of removing the final apple given that one apple, one orange, and one banana have been removed is simply two divided by two plus three plus four plus five. So this is the new number of apples that you have in the basket. This is the new number of oranges that you have one banana has been removed, so it's four, not five. And pomegranate, we never removed any, so they remain five, right? So it is two divided by 14. What you will do now is basically, you've calculated all of these probabilities that you had to, then you will substitute three divided by 17 over here, you will substitute four divided by 16 over here, five divided by 15 over here, and two divided by 14 over here. In this lecture, we learned about law of probability number three, which is also known as joint probability law. We introduced the formal definition and then jumped into an example, which showed us how this joint probability law is used in action. Of all the three laws of probability that we have reviewed in this lecture series, this is probably the most complicated one and it feeds into Bayes' theorem, which arguably is the most difficult concept within probability and statistics for FE exam. If you found this preview lecture helpful, I am confident that you will also greatly benefit from the full course that contains over 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCES FE electrical and computer exam specification. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus full length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well-reviewed course comes with an amazing 30-day full refund policy, no questions asked. On top of all this, I've also included a special discount link in the text section of this video. 